In this video, I will show you how to build an AI phone system for McDonald's. This will be an AI phone number. Customers can call to ask questions about the menu and services, make an order, etc. If you have yet to experience these AI phone systems, here is a quick demo. Hey, how's it going? Hello, it's going well. Thank you for asking. How can I assist you with your McDonald's experience today? Hey, I was just wanting to make an order. Great. What would you like to order today? The benefit of this system is that we can fully automate these calls. No human teams are required and all calls will be picked up with zero delay. This is just one use case for AI phone agents and I've covered many areas where these systems can be integrated. So I do recommend checking out my other videos on the channel. Now this build will be slightly different from my previous builds as I'm gonna be using the new conversational builder in retail AI. Rather than solely prompt engineering like my previous videos, we can gain more control over the output which will be critical for more sophisticated agents. I'm gonna go through it step by step so you'll understand precisely how this process works. So let's jump right into it. So jumping right into it, this right here is Retail AI. Like I said, I've covered this plenty of times on the channel. If you're not yet familiar with it, there's plenty of other videos walking through the platform and how to build agents. And in this video, we're gonna be using a little bit of a different process for building the agent. And so in this case, we're gonna be using a brand new feature called the Conversational AI Builder. And so if I just go to the top right of my screen here on my retail dashboard, I'll see Conversation Flow Agent. And this is what allows us to build quite a lot more complex agents where we're able to have a lot more deterministic flows. And I'll go through what all that means and how this compares to some of the other agents that we built on the channel before, which is purely using prompt engineering. In this case, we're able to actually start to have blocks and modules and nodes. And I'll go through what that all means as well. So I'll hit start from blank and you'll see that we land on quite a different page to what we're used to when building out these agents. And you'll see here, we've got this sort of canvas display where we can take these what they call nodes and sort of drag them around the page like this. If you've used a chatbot builder like VoiceFlow before, you'll notice that it's sort of a similar process, how you can create these nodes and, and drag to each different step of the process. And I'll walk through how this works and why this is a benefit in some cases versus maybe it's not the best use in other cases as well. And then also I'm gonna be shaping this for the use case of building a sort of a mock demo for McDonald's. So the first thing that we can do is create this brand new template. You'll land on this page just like this. And this is the first node that pops up. So the way that this works is that the conversation pretty much just follows through with the pathway that you create. So we'll see you've got this sort of begin module right here. Once that's triggered, obviously a call has been initiated and we're landing on the welcome node. At the moment, it just says, hello, this is customer support. This is a customer support department. How can I help you today? And this is a static message. So if I click into this, you'll see here, we've actually got two different types of ways of communicating to the user, either through a prompt or through a static sentence. If we're just reading out the first message, we can just use a static sentence because it doesn't need to change too much. Everybody's going to be receiving the same first message in this case. So for the most part, if we want to customize this, we can. Hello, this is the customer support department. And I could even just say for McDonald's, how can I help you today? And then from here, you'll see at the bottom, there's a section called transition. Now this is where we get a lot more control over the different pathways and different ways that we can control the conversation. So this system is really for a lot more sophisticated and complex builds with these voice agents. If we're going to be building a more simple appointment booking system with maybe a few qualification questions that needs to answer some questions based on the knowledge base. That type of build is one that we would most likely recommend to be built by purely using prompt engineering. When we're using this, this is for much more complex flows where we've got a, a prompt that could be you know, a thousand words plus that has seven different function calls. It could have a whole range of you know different types of pathways that need to be going down. And when you get to that level of sophistication in pure wording and prompting, the potential for errors to occur is a, is a, a higher chance of that happening at scale when we start to send out hundreds and hundreds of calls. But with this type of system, we can begin to eliminate some of those inconsistencies and those sort of uncertainties behind having that large of a prompt because we can control everything very precisely. And the only downside of using something like this is that it is likely gonna be a bit harder to get used to in terms of how to structure the assistant and the best way to have this structured so that it does exactly what you want it to. But this is the way to get a much more complex agent. So in our case, if we're doing a support system for McDonald's, obviously in this case, we might just be making an order, maybe even submitting a complaint as well. So I might make a transition down here by clicking on edit and just say user wants to make wants to make a complaint. And so once we've created our transition, these are the two different pathways that we can create defined pathways to go down. Now the general understanding and intelligence of the bot can still be controlled like the previous 
prompt side of things. So if we go to the agent settings in the top right, you'll see that we can still do everything that we were doing before. And this is still going to be referred to. It's still going to be used. It's just going to be less used because we're going to be diverting the path based on a bit more conditional flows. So in this case, we can build out the entire prompt and we can give it some knowledge about business to do everything we were doing before, give it context you know, with knowledge base information, FAQ, answering anything we want it to have that knowledge base information in the back end. You can obviously use the knowledge base for that as well. It's going to have all that knowledge. So if we don't make an order, we don't make a complaint, we ask a question, the bot will still work the same as the previous system that we were using in terms of purely using a prompt. But in this case, we're able to just control it a bit better. So if somebody does want to make an order and that is triggered, we can now use this flow to drag to another module, another node. And so we can do that by going up to conversation, clicking on this and it will just spawn in a new node right here. And we can just drag from the dot. So if we're making an order, drag over here and now we can create a prompt specifically for creating an order. So if this is a very large prompt, it's more sophisticated, you know, a process for creating an order, which in this case, it probably will be. If we're going to be capturing an order, we want to make sure that we have captured their main order. Maybe we've got an entire flow for doing upsells for fries and a drink. We want to have, you know, the entire ability to learn the menu and understand the menu and the way that we want to communicate. Potentially, if we were to do this all in one prompt, potentially we have errors that could occur where it doesn't capture a drink. It doesn't ask to do that. It doesn't ask to do upsells. It could potentially happen. So I've gone ahead and added in a very small prompt. I've just said, your role is to capture the user's McDonald's order. You must also try to upsell them on a meal with fries and a drink. Now, obviously, if we're going to be using the conversational builder, these prompts, you're going to want to have them a lot more complex than this because we could just use the other builder to do this. But if we were going to be building out, obviously, the real solution, which is going to be enterprise level system, we are going to want to obviously have this to be a much more sophisticated prompt that has knowledge about the business, knowledge about, you know, examples of how to communicate this stuff and, and communicate it and have those conversations back and forth. But I'm just demonstrating the use case of this particular builder and how we can create these types of agents using this. But I'll give you a quick test right now of this right here and just see if it works. Hey, how's it going? Hello, it's going well. Thank you for asking. How can I assist you with your McDonald's experience today? Hey, I was just going to make an order. Great. What would you like to order today? And if you're interested, I can suggest a meal that includes fries and a drink for a complete experience. Yeah, I was just looking to get a, a cheeseburger. A cheeseburger is a classic choice. Would you like to make it a meal by adding some crispy fries and a refreshing drink? It's a great way to enjoy a full McDonald's experience. Yeah, that'd be great. Perfect. I'll add a cheeseburger meal with fries and a drink to your order. Would you like to choose a specific drink or should I recommend one for you? You can just choose something for me. All right, how about a classic Coca-Cola to go with your meal? So you can see there, obviously a very basic example. It was able to understand that I was looking to make an order and then move over to the second prompt where it was looking at this more specifically. So I hope that gives you some context and understanding as to why this would be useful, where this initial prompt for capturing the order is not included in the first prompt. The first part of the conversation doesn't use any of it. It's not gonna be using it to influence the conversational part of it. And this is really important when we're building out an agent that is much larger than this. If we're gonna be building out an agent that has access to five critical elements for capturing an order, sending an order off, clarifying these things. The fact that we can split up these prompts is far more advanced because we can now have no prompts sort of conflict with each other, which is a big issue typically when we start to scale these systems. Because when you scale it, you've got a single prompt with a thousand words or more with, uh, you know, potentially five or six different pathways built in that actually are not relevant to each other, which can cause conflicts in potentially running the wrong function calls at different times or potentially just conflicting the types of tasks that need to be done with tasks from other pathways. So hopefully that makes sense in why this is pretty important. Being able to use these transition cards makes it so where these prompts are going to next is quite relevant to what we're actually doing. And so I've just added on another module at the end here. Please summarize the order to them and ask them to pay for the order. Hey, how's it going? Hello, I'm here to help you with any questions or concerns you might have about McDonald's. How can I assist you today? I'd like to just order a cheeseburger. Great choice. Would you like to make it a meal by adding some crispy fries and a refreshing drink? That'd be perfect. perfect yeah, I'd, I'd just get some, some fries and uh, maybe a Coke if that's okay. Absolutely. So we have a cheeseburger meal with fries and a Coke. Is there anything else you'd like to add to your order, like a dessert or maybe an extra side? No, that's complete for now. Perfect. Your order is a cheeseburger meal with fries and a Coke. Please proceed to payment to complete your order. Thank you. So you can see there, it went on to the last module there and then read out that prompt to summarize the order. 
and ask them to pay for the meal. Now, in addition to using the transition modules for just conversational pieces in knowing what to say next, we can also use this for the function calls. So this is also a pretty big element to this because Sometimes when we start to scale the systems, triggering functions can be a big issue if we're triggering them at the wrong times or we're triggering the wrong ones for different conditions that they weren't meant to. There's a lot of issues that can go wrong when we start to scale these systems for function calls. So in this case, we can essentially have an entire module dedicated to triggering the function at a certain point in the conversation. So if we only want, so if we only want this function for triggering an order to a CRM or whatever, just making a use case for it, wherever we're triggering this, we only want this to occur right after and a user has submitted an order and right after we've obviously transitioned that that order is complete and they've confirmed that order. So we're very strict as to when we're running this function and it can only run this function at that point. If we've triggered the order from here and we move on to a, a secondary module or, or whatever, at that point, we can't run that function again. It's essentially conditionally set to never run that function because we won't be able to get to that point again. The benefit of this is that we can create a very strict rule set around when or when not a function can or cannot be called. And so this gives us a lot more reliability over running these functions. Functions. If we're going to be building a much more scalable system that has 10 different functions that should only be running based on different conditions, we don't want to run them if there is a potential issue for doing that. And so if we've got a system which is sending leads or it's sending text messages, we also don't want anybody to override those functions because fundamentally, if the prompt isn't guarded enough, somebody can just trigger a function at any point. But with this system, they pretty much can't. We're locking them in to say, you can only trigger this function at this point and at this point. So I hope that makes sense. If you are a business owner and you've been looking at these AI voice agents and you're interested in implementing them into your business, don't hesitate to schedule a call with me below.